Hello, everybody. All right, I got a mega unboxing for the band box. They all come at the same time, which makes it easy for a nice big video. I have the BAM Horror, the BAM Geek, the BAM Comic, and not the BAM Ultra, but a one-off Back to the Future Volume 2 box. The BAM Ultra I don't have yet, so I'll show you it later. Um, let's start with the BAM Geek. Uh, these are $29.99 a month plus shipping. Once a month, you will get removed. It's called a subscription. A lot of people I found out don't know what subscriptions are. They, I, 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 I do a lot of the emails um, with the BAM box. And um, some of you may have seen my name. Some of you maybe not. Some of you don't know my name. So you know what you're looking for. But anyways, um, they wanted to order one box. Well, it says at least four times on checkout and your emails and on the way out that you will be renewed on the next first. So I'm working on the confusion of um, why I get so many emails on the first of the month of not understanding why they were renewed. So anyways, I digress as I'm knocking into things right here. I'm going to start showing you all some stuff. Here is the BAM Geek, the Artist Select card done by Andy Bond. There we go. I... Can't say I work with, but I am familiar with Andy's work on the Back to Retro card sets I work with. He does the, some of those also. And we have the Fantastic Four Villain of Galactus in a, I want to say, 70s, 80s comic book style. I like it. Um, here's a very, seems to be a hot item people are looking for. There's a set of four. I don't remember the movie at all. I've seen it once, and all I remember is really bad blonde hair dying. Namely, in Bruce Willis before he went sans hair. Anyways, it's a little, um, I don't even know what it's called. Let's get the spoiler sheet if I have one in here. I moved my boxes around, and I had to rebuild it just for this video. But no, I didn't put it back in. But anyways, there's four of these, um... Land, air, sea, wind, water, rain, coffee. I don't know what the, all the different reasons are. But I got this one with the squiggly lines. I think there's one that goes this way. Another one goes this way. And another one goes... They're four different. They're very similar, but different when they're held next to each other. But these are kind of cool. There's texture on them. They're kind of beat up. I don't know how they're supposed to be in the movie. But there you go. There's your prop of Band Geek. Uh, pins. We got, um, these pins are for Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It has been at least 15 years since I've seen that movie, maybe longer. And apparently there's a lot of bullets in there. Now, I don't know which ones are which, but I think this is the 99 bullet. A little cowboy looking fella here. And then you go over here and you've got this little ombre. This is the 250 kind of bullet right here and then you've got the old timer looking bullet which is the 99 which is this guy right here um the props i mean the prints i like them this month they're pretty cool they're much they're up line my sensibility not every print needs to be because there's so many different styles in the world and collections in the world However, me being a comic book guy, I kind of like this. Here is from Zack Snyder's Justice League. And there is Apocalypse. Um, I, I absolutely adored the Snyder cut. Uh, the original cut was down in 40% for me. And so far, this is my favorite movie this year. So, the Snyder cut. My only problem with Apocalypse is I felt he was a little skinnier. I felt him to be bigger and beefier. Um, but you know, artist interpretation on the move when the movie was made, it's a minor gripe. I'm not complaining. I hope they do more with it because I felt like that movie was a good kickoff to other things. The variant is black and white, however, there's cool omega beams shooting out of his eyeballs, getting ready to go fry somebody. So, this is kind of cool. Signed by the artist right down yonder, number 24 500, low number. All right. Autograph. 
from Galaxy Quest. If you've ever seen the movie, if you're familiar with the movie, go watch the movie. It's actually not too bad. It was a movie based around um, Star Trek conventions back in the 90s, how they were very much of the, the heyday and places to go. And now they spun off to pop culture and horror and geek and anime and all these other conventions. However, we've got a signer here. Um, I don't remember his name, forgive me. I should have had my spoiler sheet. But it's um, from Galaxy Quest. That fella right there. If you know him, you know him. <laughs> All right. Okay. The Horror Box. Um, let's do the art card. This is from Mr. Andy Bond also. This is um, Negan from The Walking Dead. I don't know. A lot of people got off the bandwagon around um, Season 7. It kind of drawn drew out the uh, Savior War and all that stuff. And I agree, it did. Um, I just watched uh, recently Season 10. And it wrapped up The Whispers. And there's an episode called I Am Negan, which is the last episode of Season 10. It's a standalone, but fantastic. It's great. One of the best ones I've seen in a long time. It just explains why Negan is and where he got little things and why he's... His motivation. It's good. good episode. These pins are from um, The Wicker Man. I have not seen either one of them. I'm not going to pretend to know anything about them. Um, I know there's an infamous Nicolas Cage one that some people love or some people say is garbage. I don't really know. Nicolas Cage... Movies as a whole are very polarizing. We got this one. Looks like the Wicker Man himself in silhouette down the sun, the uh, sunrise, with a little ladder coming around out of somewhere questionable. Okay. We've got the 250 pin of a um, of a policeman holding a fish. Could be a you know, a military guy, maybe. He's got like a sergeant stripes. Um, maybe he's Sergeant Postman. I don't really know, but he's got like a fish head and he's chilling and getting ready to cook some dinner. Let's see. The 99 pin is, um, looks like Christopher Walken from Batman Returns. Crazy looking guy. Orange background. Um, looks like Stonehenge, maybe in the background, some, some benches or maybe the pie symbol. 3.16, blah, 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 blah. I don't really know. But there's that one for you. The Prince. Not Prince the Singer. Sorry about love that. Um, we've got, it's autographed by Jay Waits. It is Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, One of the Deads. It's nondescript, so it could be One of the Deads, period. Um, you've got the flames, actually, are hands. So at first I looked at this and I'm like, what a bunch of dead space. And then I looked at it and realized it got a little more, some more going on to it than I thought. So, you know, I was critical at first and I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to hold this up here. Is that right there? Let me see, right there. There we go. And then we're going to pull get this up. This is the 500 print and do like that. That's pretty cool, right? There you go. The 500 print completes it. Not too bad. All right, the prop. Um, this is from... I, I follow Stephen King movies, but I'm not the biggest diehard for Stephen King movies. This is from one called Desperation. I think it's like a Western kind of thing. Could be wrong. But it's... Um, I think Marie said... Or some uh, Marie's niece said it was like an eagle, dragon, snake guy. Um, and she's not wrong. So it looks like it's got ears of a fox and a dragon's mouth, but the forehead of an eagle and the tongue of a snake. And he's got cute little feet right there, too. So um, I think it's maybe it might be polyresin that looks metal or maybe a little really lightweight metal um there have been reports of some broken ones i haven't seen one broken mine didn't come that way so i'm not really sure 
But anyways, if you know it, you probably will appreciate this item. All right. Last item in this box. I gotta get gone. All right. We got missing October 21st, 21st, 1994. Heather Donahue, Joshua Leonard, and Michael Williams hiked in the Maryland's Black Hills Forest to shoot a documentary. Should I talk it differently? Filmed on a local legend, the Blair Witch. They were never heard from again. I should so sound like that more often. All deep and brooding. <laughs> Anyways, it's the missing sign poster, which is kind of cool for Michael Williams, who played Michael in the film. This promotional on this was brilliant. Um, I don't know if you can get get away with it today with everybody with their cell phones and not minding their own damn business and got to post every nuance of everything on everything on the internet and it drives me knocking futz. Anyways, this is the world we live in. But that's a cool, pretty cool autograph for those of the Blair Witch. I watched it. I was scared cuckoo because, you know, I thought it was real. Um, or it made me at least think it was real as much as paranormal, paranormal activity. You know, you, you think, oh, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. But any film that you can watch it and say, is it real? Just for a moment, I think has done its job. And The Blair Witch and Paranormal, Paranormal Activity did that for me. All right, the comic box. This one was um, tagged teams. And the teams was defined on different... Um, Fonts from different famous teams, Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, some other teams. Um, there's a, several different covers for this book that is re uh, out there. This is signed by, I don't know if it's Gary Duggan or Jerry Duggan, but uh, we got Miss Rogue herself. That's a sharp looking cover. Um... 9.8 um, came out in the Illumino, Illuminati Bundle Exclusive. Um, David Nakayama, art story, Jerry Duggan, first appearance of Philong. I'm not sure if, who that is. Forge and Uncle Ben, Uncle, um, Forge and Ben Ulrich make an appearance. I know who Ben Ulrich is from the movies. All right, but anyways, that is pretty sharp. I've seen a couple other ones. Um, in the box, now, you will get a reader comic. The reader comic may not be the same as your slab comic, but the story inside will be exactly the same. This is X-Men number one. This is one of the other covers you may have may gotten slabbed. However, this is the cool cover with Archangel on it. And inside, if I recall correctly... It is the story from the 70s. I could be wrong, but the art is pretty... I'll find a good page for you. Look at that. The art for comic books has just become a different level of things in the world. It's insane. On top of that, you get a cool comp holder to hold this on your wall. So that's kind of, kind of awesome in itself. All right. Um, I actually have an extra of this exact comic. I, I got two exactly the same. I didn't get any, any variants. So if you are interested, contact me. Maybe we'll make a deal. Um, obviously, looking behind me, we collect everything if you've watched any kind of our videos. So I got one more box to go. It is the Back to the Future Ultra Box. And I need to stop farting around and putting this in here. All right. One to go. Bam Ultra. Now this is the comic box got a redesign and it makes sense and it's much stronger and has more integrity to it. However, this I'm not sure what more we can do other than adding some support. This is a 16 by 20 matted uh, 14 by 11 by 14 image, I should say. All right. Inside we have a prop of Hill Valley. Banner, class of 1985. The print is 
from 1955, the Saturday Night Enchantment Under the Sea Dance. Be there or be square. November 12th, 1955. Marvin Berry and the Starlighters, High, High Valley High School. Pretty cool. I like it. Back to the Future fans will, you know, this is a perfect prop for them. That with the props from Back to the Future 1 and the license plates. And you got a cool looking wall. All right. Other than a bunch of cardboard, which I can use to ship other stuff out. This was $250. One of the, it was probably the highest priced uh, Ultra offered so far. Not an Ultra. It's a one-off of what will happen occasionally with... Uh, opportunities arising so this one was successful which opens the the door for other higher profile signers that may even excel in ultra box but we have michael j fox there's a beautiful nice big swoosh autograph one of the things that chaps me is when they got a giant area to sign and the autograph is about that big in a nondescript area but he signed very close to him this opens, you know, perfectly for if we ever run into uh, Christopher Lloyd again. I'm not sure how many more cons he's going to be doing, but, you know, we've ran into him. Or I don't know if I want to mail this in. It's kind of big. But I guess we can take the photo off the back and ship that to him. But it's a cool mat. The orange matches the, you know, overall theme. It's got a cool Back to the Future logo on it. I was wondering if it was going to say Marty McFly, Michael J. Fox, or the simple Back to the Future logo, which makes the most sense. All right. So there was five different options for this. I'm going to show you, but I'm not showing you how many you can actually see. But anyways, there you go. There's five different options. Um, there's the past. There's part two. Uh, part two. I'm not sure if I see any. No, I don't see any part threes in here. Then you're right. But anyways, um, that's it for the August wave that I received. There's also a gaming anime, which I don't get. Because I just don't know enough to justify it. We don't really collect it. Gaming and anime isn't much in this household. So, um, the September renewals just hit today. Go to bandbox.com and you can see all the boxes available for September. Maybe one of them suits you. Because my feeling is there's something special coming in October. You didn't hear this from me, but you might want to get a subscription now because a couple boxes will probably be capped out in October. Don't come crying to me that you're saying you need one when I told you already. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.